Okay, uh, just uh, this is John Lavendi talking, Nuvias, um, Belgium. Um, just sorry for this uh, small delay. We had a problem of uh, connection with our uh, colleague or supplier trust wave in uh, in Chicago, but it's uh, it's apparently all all running fine. So um, today we will uh, talk, uh, and I will be short. I will talk about Office 365. 365 is known by everybody, of course, as it is now the standard productivity platform used around the world. Millions of people are working on Office 365 every day. Um, companies using Office 365, off they realize, off worse, they don't realize that they are um, exposed. Um, to targeted attacks, to data data loss uh, and compliance if they don't add an additional layer uh, to Office 365. That additional layer, um, TrustDev can, uh, can, can provide it uh, to protect the companies against uh, business email compromise, uh, phishing, blended threats, which are the APTs uh, and targeted threats. So this is the, the stuff we are going to, to, to talk today. And then, uh, yeah, we have 15 minutes, uh, question and answers included. So I will, I will directly give the, the mic to, uh, to Jenny Chan, who will present the, um, the solution. Many thanks. Um, talk to you at the end. All right. Thank you so much, John. And good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, yes, I had uh, some technical issues. But today we're going to um, present to you our, the Trustwave Secure Email Gateway Solution, which many of you have known uh, for many years as Mail Marshall. And um, today we're going to talk about how Office 365 combined with the Trustwave Secure Email Gateway Cloud Solution is better together. Um, and So just real quick, um, our agenda, we'll talk about some market drivers um, and then going into Office 365's gaps, the benefits of combining the two, um, or Office 365 with another email security solution, present to you some upsell opportunities, and then go into our resources and Q&A. So market drivers, I think all of you have experienced in the last um, you know, three to five years uh, these two major drivers in our markets. The first one I want to point to you is that $26 billion figure. That is um, global losses, financial losses, suffered by companies, organizations, large and small, that the U.S. Uh, FBI have been tracking in the last seven years, um, that $26 billion in losses for business email compromise that John just mentioned, you know, it could be any kind of attack, um, impersonation, uh, fraud to, to get money from, you know, somebody acting as the CEO, uh, ransomware, phishing, all those types that get categorized into this business email compromise group. So that's a, that's a huge number and we need to help organizations stop more losses. Um, the other really big driver, of course, for our email security space. And we all know email security has been around for 20, over 20 years. But um, in the last you know, three to five, there's just been an increased interest by customers to want to re-look at their email uh, security solution again. What they're using may not be as effective or working as well, but also there's a huge digital transformation and cloud migrations of companies moving into the cloud, uh, moving off of on-premise exchange to Office 365. That is the biggest trend we're seeing. You can see there 81% of global businesses now use Microsoft Office 365. There are also you know, companies that move to Gmail, G Suite, and other cloud-hosted email services. But this is probably the biggest driver that you'll, you see and, and we see as well. So we want to help you. Um, you know, go with the trend and, and be able to help your end clients. So in talking about Office 365, Office 365 has been around for almost 10 years. Initially, um, you know, about nine years ago, when Microsoft first released 
the service, a lot of us specialized email security vendors thought, okay, we're done because Office 365 come with basic antivirus, anti-spam protections, and customers think that's free or included in the service. But luckily for us, uh, over the last you know almost decade, there's there's lots of track history, and we can see how they have performed in these um, last nine years. Customers who um, thought that maybe the basic protection was enough, that the Microsoft Exchange Online protection uh, was enough, have found out the hard way that actually it isn't. And um, Microsoft offering their, their advanced threat protection, ATP. So with EOP, Exchange Online Protection, my customers have that within the Office 365 E3 service level and uh, the ATP comes with the E5 service level, those actually still are not sufficient. And really, um, it provides sort of a mediocre protection for the lower to middle market. We find that very large enterprise, um, they still, those customers absolutely understand this and continue to um, include an additional you know, email security layer to, to their Office 365 service. So uh, we also have found over the years that the Office 365 protection produce a lot of false positives. They do miss significant, you know, phishing mm -hmm. or malware and other BEC uh, attacks. And I'll show you some results coming up because we actually did uh, testing ourselves uh, over the course of uh, a year against EOP and ATP with our own trust wave security email gateway cloud service. So also, um, uh, other areas like known threats, you know, where if you have zero day attacks, unknown threats coming out, Microsoft sometimes um, will often miss those as well. So why are we presenting TrustWave Security Email Gateway Cloud and Office 365 together? So as I mentioned, um, TrustWave, our Spider Labs email security research team, so we have a dedicated uh, email security research and malware analysis team. Um, we went ahead and conducted a year-long study uh, comparing Microsoft's Exchange Online Protection, EOP, uh, against our own uh, Secure Email Gateway Cloud service, as well as Microsoft's uh, E5 service level with the Advanced Threat Protection against our site cloud uh, service. And uh, what we found are some very, very interesting results. First up is uh, malicious spam. So where Microsoft, you know, will categorize, will find uh, spam emails, um, they do miss a significant amount of malicious spam that gets categorized as regular spam that still goes into the user's, you know, junk mailbox. And so the, the users still have access and could potentially open one up just to, if they're curious, or they check their junk box once in a while and potentially release a, a malware into their system and into the company's network. Um, you see that 67.42%. That's how much um, Microsoft Office 365's Exchange Online Protection missed, as opposed to uh, TrustWave's detection, which is around you know 99.6%, just categorizing malicious um, uh, spam. The other thing here I talk about. Um, file types. So TrustWave can recognize uh, over 400 file types. Why is that important? Well, if we can recognize a file type, we can unpack that file and scan um, the contents within the backend codes, the macros and everything within that file type and determine whether or not that particular file is malicious or not. Whereas um, Microsoft, the last time I checked, within their technical form, they can only support or recognize up to about 70 file types. So that's a, that's a huge difference. If you cannot recognize specific file types, you certainly cannot unpack it and um, detect what's behind that. Another area that we have found in significant uh, difference in, in terms of uh, performance and detection capability is we've looked at um, all the email attachments the malicious email attachments from TrustWave's own incident response investigations 
for customers that come to us where they've had a breach. And you can see here again, the customers that were just using Office 365 alone um, had you know, 80% of all those uh, attacks came through as malicious email attachments. Whereas um, Trustwave with our secure email gateway product, you know, we were able to detect 100% of those cases and prevent uh, future types of attacks. So that's a, another important uh, area where um, as far as attachments go, the other uh, findings that we, we had was we found um, a lot of where, where there are Microsoft's own file types like Excel or Word or PowerPoints, if there are macros behind those files, there's um, malicious code that gets hidden in the macros and Microsoft often miss those. And, and do not detect the macros, malicious code behind those files. So that's another scary area. You know, you think Microsoft would actually detect their own file types um, with hidden code, but um, that's where there's uh, significant misses as well. So, and then the last area I wanna highlight is the business email compromise uh, testing results as well and, and phishing. You can see the percentages here. Um, Office 365 with their EOP or ATP standalone, um, you know, you see the 99.6%. Whereas if you combine our uh, email so solution with theirs, you increase that percentage. And maybe some of you say, well, that's not a huge jump. But if you think about how many hundreds or thousands of emails that are going across uh, per user or per organization, you know, that percentage can can mean a world of difference. It just takes one email to, um, to breach a network. Doesn't take a lot. So, and here uh, with business email compromise messages, that's an even bigger um, difference. 92%, 92.5% detected by Microsoft versus if you combined their um, EOP and ATP with Trustwave's uh, Secure Email Gateway Cloud Service, it gets up to 99.58. Now, of course, you may see those numbers and say, well, that's still not 100%, but no security vendor, no email security vendor will be able to ever you know, provide that 100% detection. There's always that chance. Um, and cyber criminals are always coming up with more uh, sophisticated attacks. So, but at least um, the idea is that it is still better to supplement or complement Office 365 with another specialist with a specialized email security solution. And so here are a summary of uh, those percentages and why um, you, know, you should look to convince your clients that they do need to supplement and complement with a trustworthy website cloud service. Other areas I want to just touch on that um, aside from security is we extend Office 365's core functionality, the productivity tools, the communication tools. There are still areas that we can help, um, really help your customers protect their Microsoft investment. So for example, talking about data leakage, uh, data loss prevention, DLP, within Office 365, you cannot create um, a lot of DLP rules. Um, you cannot customize a lot of DLP rules that may be specific to your business. But with a service like our Trustwave's uh, email security solution, you can create any number of DLP rules that can be customized to your organization. Other areas uh, like SIM integration. Um, we have had many requests uh, probably three to four years ago from large enterprise and medium enterprise companies that want to um, feed email logs into their Splunk or ArcSight uh, or IBM Q Radar. And we're able to support that as well within our uh, environment using Syslog. So that's another area that very large enterprise customers have taken advantage of. Um, in looking at archiving, I'll talk a little bit more about that, but these are just all the areas in which we can help your end clients um, really protect their Office 365 uh, investment. 
because there are still all these gaps and, and areas that need additional support. So talking about some upsell opportunities to help you, you know, um, every customer is going to have some kind of email security in place. It's just a matter of now whether, you know, one performs better than the other. Um, if they're not happy with what they have anymore, how to replace that. But in addition, we want to help you gain more revenue um, by some upsell um, opportunities. So I want to mention. Um, first up is our Trustwave's Malware Analysis Sandbox service. So with this, this is a newly launched feature um, that we launched in November of last year. And uh, where we talked about those attachments with the malicious code hidden behind, um, this, is, this is an important area I think that your end clients will find uh, very useful to really get the comprehensive, you know, full protection. Um, we did testing against uh, Microsoft's ATP, Advanced Threat Protection, where their safe attachment service uh, compared to our sandbox service. And what we find, you can see the um, types of uh, you know, um, uh, detection that Microsoft has done, but they still miss that small percentage. And this is where, say, um, where Office 365 missed you know, 10% of uh, malicious attachments within emails. Um, we, Trustwave, detected um, the rest, and so, uh, this is a, a, a really important piece. We've created some new bundles for you um, that's called the Office 365 Companion Package. And uh, you can contact um, you know, Nuvius about those new new bundles. Um, but it's, it's a, a lot cheaper for the customer to buy a Trustware Malware Analysis Sandbox service within the Office 365 Companion Package bundle versus upgrading to Microsoft's you know, E5 service level, for example, that includes the ATP. It's a significant difference in price in that um, a list price, just giving list price, for example, you, know, you are adding um, $15 USD um, per user per month, whereas you could add just you know, $20 per user per year to, to buy this uh, ATP service. So there's a real savings that you can help your end clients with. The other service that we wanted to um, remind you of, many of you may know this already, as the uh, Trustwave Secure Email Encryption Service used to be called Send Secure. Uh, many of you probably already have sold it to uh, your, your clients. Um, we, Trustwave has, has rebranded it um, from Send Secure to just a secure email encryption service. Um, there's a, there are two options that's available to customers today. With the Send Secure service in the past, um, it was through a partner called Zix. Uh, we have since uh, changed partners to a company called EchoWorks because they offer a lot more uh, bang for the buck. There's, uh, they're offering two types of uh, services. The Send Secure that you know is the same uh, within the Essential Encryption Service that provides the web portal encryption. Um, if you move to the Advanced Encryption, your customers can provide their own logo um, and customize the, the naming of the, lo of the uh, web portal encryption. But in addition to that, they have these additional encryption methods. Uh, S-MIME comes up a lot. For more advanced customers, um, PGP encryption, TLS, and uh, secure PDF that's uh, being used more and more uh, frequently by different organizations and be able to um, also have attachments uh, be encrypted into these other forms. And of course, your web portal encryption is still there. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, how would it benefit? Well, you know, we have a lot of financial services. Uh, banking customers use this service, but it can go um, specific departments like HR, your human resources, or maybe the legal department within a company or the finance department. You can, you can deploy the service just for those groups. You don't have to 
uh, sell it to the entire um, client base, that may save them some money. But um, it's absolutely very scalable. It's cloud-based service, so easy to use, easy to deploy, can get up and running very quickly. Um, so we, we've we had uh, lots of customers really take advantage of the encryption service, where it's also, um, it's a policy-based encryption, right? So you could set, uh, the customer can set specific rules that trigger encryption, it doesn't have to be all or none. Uh, so that's a, a very useful tool um, to be able to set specific rules that would then trigger encryption or the customer can encrypt on demand as well. So um, finally, the other uh, upsell area that we wanted to bring to your attention is archiving. This is um, email archiving is a, an area where it is still very much um, a green field, what I call green field. So it's not a saturated market at all. There's plenty of opportunities um, to sell email archiving. And every customer um, buying email archiving would be buying for one of these four or maybe multiples or all four of these reasons. Compliance, uh, I know a lot of, um, you know, maybe German customers will say to me, oh, I, I don't need email archiving, we don't want to keep anything. But with GDPR and other um, regulations, it's really um, a matter of you, you must have some kind of data retention policy in place. Um, and even for business continuity, just it's not just about you know, email data management, but um, there are areas where you know, a lot of our, us uh, as email users, we keep so many emails and attachments within our inbox, almost acting as a filing cabinet for us, right? So it gets hard to manage over time and also it becomes a headache for your IT department because they're requiring you to keep your inbox down to a certain size. Um, and so with an email archiving service, uh, you can reduce those uh, storage costs in uh, pushing to the cloud and having someone else manage. But more importantly though, why offer Trustways email archiving? Well, one of the things we always hear is it's really hard to search for specific emails within Office 365. For example, just I use Outlook, you know, Office 365 myself. If I don't have the exact email address or sender's name or subject, um, it's very hard to find the emails that I need that's maybe three, four, or five years old. With Trustwave email archiving, the searching becomes very simple because of very robust and flexible policy a search engine. Um, you can type in keywords, even misspell them or string a whole a bunch of keywords and get results within one to two seconds. Another area that you should um, find out from your clients is if they are required to have any kind of advanced e-discovery and legal hold requirements. This is talking about providing proof of uh, providing emails that become evidence in court. So one important point that I always uh, remind our sellers is that within Outlook, you can actually take an email, change the text and the content within that email, save it, resave it as if it's the original email. You can never ever prove in court that that particular email from, from Office 365 or Outlook is the original email untampered with. But with Trustwave Email Archiving, you every single email is digitally fingerprinted. So that means even 10, 20 years from now, you can prove in court that that particular email has not been tempered with. That's a really important um, aspect of the service. And many of our, you know, like accounting firms, uh, financial services institutions use the service for that reason. Um, all, also in terms of, um, you know, who does the searching? Sometimes companies get subpoenaed by the court to produce, say, 10 years worth of emails. That becomes a very difficult job for the IT department. And with the service, you can delegate that to an external law firm and uh, paralegals and various levels of um, um, uh, searching uh, authority and how they manage those uh, searches, the e-discovery and legal hold searches. 
and be able to um, allow an outside organization to do that job for you. So, uh, finally, just a reminder of um, Trustwave's various deployment methods. Um, you all know the Mail Marshall on-premise software product very well. By the way, we are going back to that name. I know many uh, of our distributors and resellers are very excited just because of the name recognition, Mail Marshall. Uh, that'll be coming soon. We are working very hard to um, get the name change throughout our website, our documents, uh, marketing collateral, everything. So you'll get an announcement soon in the near future about that. But I um, want to remind you with our cloud service, we do have um, a European data center or data centers for our site cloud service already. Um, that went into production June last year. So many of our uh, EMEA clients are enjoying um, this particular service being um, hosted and managed in Europe so that you're meeting your, your data privacy and GDPR requirements. Um, we'll also have um, you know, data centers coming up too in the UK. That's going to be, um, we're looking for beta testers now and uh, the UK instance will be ready uh, in about two weeks and we're looking to have general availability um, probably in early April. So keep that in mind. Uh, we also offer, maybe some of you uh, know or may not know, we have a service provider edition as well um, that allows uh, service providers to offer their own white labeled cloud-based email security solution. So. And just to kind of wrap up, um, you know, how you can help your customers win we have very high detection rates. You can see here 99.97% of spam detection with nearly no false positives. Um, malicious spam, as we talked about before, a 99.99%, that's pretty much close to 100%. Um, other areas, uh, we talked about business email compromise and spoofing. There's actually a specialized engine uh, within our uh, secure email gateway that allows you to put in executive name lists to prevent you know, CEOs, CIOs, important people in a company to get spoofed. Um, and of course, our Trustwave you know, Spire Labs team that I mentioned, we actually have a dedicated team just for email security research and malware analysis. And where you win, well, you've got you know, multiple detections, um, seamless integration with Office 365, and uh, built in other, other features that um, Microsoft may be slightly lacking in. So oh, I know we've got some time left. So I'll wrap it up. I wanted to open up for questions. Uh, I just wanted maybe Jenny, if I may, uh, just summarize what's uh, the content of the bundle uh, Office 365 companion, which is, if I'm correct, a standard package, of course, on which uh, Trustwave adds the data protection, which is a module for data loss against data loss, uh, plus advanced protection, which is the blended threat um, module, and the accepted acceptable use, which is a protection against uh, pornography image. Uh, so it's a scanner, and uh, everything that uh, is. Um, related to aid racism and, uh, and of course pornography also in but in text so this is the the total package uh office 365 companion uh which we we talked uh, earlier in the presentation thanks john and we'll be sending out uh, a data sheet that outlines um those the office 365 companion package and what's included in all of them but it basically gives you really uh you know really comprehensive protection that has exactly. the link following yeah you are rewriting um everything pretty much under the sun and it comes in a, a very very uh, good price as well so yeah it's a good opportunity of uh, additional business while providing additional security to the uh, the user so it's a really good uh, package so I don't know for the questions uh, and answers how uh, we can oh, and John, we also want to mention too, um, we're we're running a promotion for for all of you 
um, where if a customer can buy two years, they'll get the third one, third year free. So, Thank you, Jenny. I forgot to mention. <laughs> yeah, buy 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 two years and and get the third for free. We'll send um, we'll send additional information on that too as a follow up as well. Okay. All right. So I think everyone's unmuted. If you want to ask um, any questions, I'll just check the chat now as well. If there are any questions there. Uh, Jenny, I've got a question concerning um, DLP. You mentioned DLP. Sure. Um, are there specific rules in uh, SG Cloud, uh, predefined rules by, by Trustwave to, uh, to achieve this? Or do you have to have the license where you um, can create your own rules? Because, uh, well, DLP is something specific to your company. So I, I, I yeah. would think that you um, need specific uh, rules for that. Yes. So yes, um, the said cloud service, Mail Marshall's uh, cloud service, come with um, preset rules within the data protection package that John mentioned, and then you can also um, buy custom rule package. Now, what I what we find too um, with uh, customers, maybe on-premise customers who are used to you know very flexible. Uh, policy engine to create all kinds of rules that they want. Um, when they move to a cloud service, they feel sometimes limited or restricted, but mm -hmm. it's not the case. Um, when you look at our site cloud full policy listing, uh, we've created those rule packages in a way of just, you know, our two decades of um, doing the filtering, detection, creating signature heuristics we created a combination of rule packages so that they do cover 99% of all your customers' use cases, um, their security policies. They really cover uh, most of those. That 1%, perhaps um, I give the example of an architecture firm who wanted to protect their CAD design drawings from leaving the organization to have, you know, protect their intellectual property, right? So in that case, they did have to create some custom rules just around preventing any kind of design and CAD design specific um, to their business to leave it. So, so yes, there are definitely prepackaged rules as well as um, you have the flexibility to be able to add uh, custom ones. Does that help? Oh, well, um, um, I tend to disagree with the 99%, but <laughs> okay. okay. That's right. another. That's that's something else, because um, as I said, DLP is, is pretty specific to your company. So yes. I'm, I, I wonder how you can create general rules to uh, achieve, um, well, uh, uh, some kind of DLP f that is specific for for a company. Um, I mean, like, so the one of the pre pre preset rules is credit card numbers, um, in all different forms. You know, so that one uh, that that gets triggered uh, quite often, depending on you know what what the organization is sending. Um, another would be uh, national ID. So I know within the U.S., I mean, we have our social security numbers. So that formats in a preset rule, um, yeah. but we can do uh, other formats because different countries have different formats. So that could be preset as well, and you could block those types of emails. That, that would be a, 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 um, a customer specific rule in that case uh well for for um for for the belgian ids for instance that okay. so that means that you need to buy you need to buy the license for uh to create your own rules or do uh, i yeah. uh right for that uh for that purpose yes now the good news is i don't know if you're familiar with the um customs rule skew uh, we have changed that pricing to mm -hmm. a flat rate. So it's very, very, um, you definitely should offer it to customers. It's no longer priced per user. I know in the past, um, when said cloud was originally launched, it the, the custom rule came in a pack of five, that SKU came in a pack of five rules, but it was priced per user. So it could become very expensive for larger organizations if you have a thousand users versus a hundred, right? 
Um, that doesn't make sense in the, anymore. And since Trustwave has moved all of our site cloud instances into Azure, that's how we are able to scale and now add um, more locations, add the European instances through Azure, we can um, deal with the capacity and allow customers to add any number of customers they want. So we're changing that rate to a flat rate package of you know, price per year uh, of that five versus doing it per user. So you, you have okay. that. And it's still five uh, package of five rules. Um, right. Per, so per if you need system. more custom rules, you just need to add. Uh, yeah, additional packages. So two two SKUs of five, then you have ten, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Yeah, well, a lot of customers with a lot of custom rules, they tend to stay on uh, SDG on prem because yes. it's still more flexible. Um, so that's that's one thing I see in in um, in the field, actually. Um, yeah. The, it's 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 a good product for the smaller customers that do not have specific rules. But if you um, are starting cre to create rules that are uh, pretty specific to the company, then a lot of users still uh, uh, want to have that on-prem. Uh, now, most of those customers still have their email on-prem as well. So. Right, I agree. Yes, I agree. And and I mean, you know, we have uh, customers who've been on Mail Marshall for 22 years. Um, yep. We're celebrating our 23rd year this year. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're customers that will never move to, to the cloud, and that's okay. Um, we're not uh, going to, you know, this, this product is going strong. There are some new features coming for um, the on-premise as well as the cloud. Uh, for example, um, optical character recognition. That was mm -hmm. requested by a very large telco customer of ours in the U.S., to be able to, you know, prevent um, DLP, right? The, the the images, you know, any kind of intellectual property or, or sensitive content that they customers, I mean, uh, employees could just take a photo and send that out. Um, so that's coming in a couple of months, the OCR. Um, and then we're still working on Unicode uh, support throughout. And that's a very big, massive undertaking, but, you know, to support, um, other languages. Um, so, um, yeah, some new things coming up. Someone asked, does, does that answer? Or, um, yeah, the, so on premise, don't worry, Mail Marshall is, is sticking around um, and not going anywhere. Someone asked if um, I can show the console of our yes. cloud service. Um, I, I'm not sure we can do that now, yeah. Jenny. We uh, should do a follow up session. But yeah, I can I can plan something with uh, Mr. Jacobi. Perfect. Okay. I will take care. So Jean-Paul, uh, je reprends contact avec toi uh, pour, pour uh, la, la vision ou la démo de la, de la console. Merci. Ah, um, Jenny, one thing that was not quite clear um, was about the archiving. The archiving you were talking about is that archiving on SEG or is it a separate service that you offer? that plugs into SDG or, or into SDG cloud? That's correct. It's a separate, it's a cloud-based uh, service. It's hosted by Trustwave, and, okay. but it can work for, um, it, it's integrated with our on-premise as well as our cloud service. Okay, and this has a uh, separate um, web interface, user interface uh, to do that searching uh, that you um, said? That's, that's correct. Um, and okay. That is a requirement for to have a separate uh, portal uh, in UI because of the, you know, sensitivity with uh, advanced e-discovery and legal hold requirements, um, where the customer can specify the um, data guardian versus, you know, um, other role-based uh, access within that. So. Um, we can do a, I, I wanted to do a follow-up session as well on just the email archiving, uh, give you more in-depth coverage and, and demo um, the UI. So, um, okay, so and there's a, there's a four eyes principle as well, I guess. Correct, yes, yeah. Okay. We, we can offer, um, if, a, if your on-premise clients absolutely want to have an on-premise uh, archive, we have that 
um, solution as well. It would be slightly custom because um, we've we've launched a service as a cloud hosted service, but um, an on-premise option, a software is is available as well. So. Okay, I guess that this uh, these kind of things could be interesting in the financial uh, world where they tend to um, try to keep their data Very on site. Well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's good that you've got a solution for that as well. So. I mean, we, you know, we we have some very very large uh, banking clients, some global banking customers. I can't name them, but um, yeah, that they're you know using this type of service. So, um, and and have have uh, they came from, for example, you know, Symantec, as as you all know, uh, offered email archiving through uh, Veritas, and We've we have heard from a lot of um, you know existing Veritas uh, archiving customers that are using Enterprise Vault and Enterprise Vault Cloud that want to switch because of um, there hasn't been a whole lot of investment by Veritas after they had split from Symantec, um, and so and customers are also finding that you know the features haven't been advanced so they're a bit clunky in the search capabilities and um, so we're we're able to convert those types of customers so definitely look for those opportunities uh, and go after the semantic veritas customers okay um, one last question for me at least um, you mentioned the uh, former sense secure i have forgotten your name yeah um, because you said it was rule-based, is that in a separate console, or is or do, are those rules integrated into the SDG product uh, cloud or or on-prem? Yep, the rules are integrated into on-premise and in the cloud. Um, okay, so you can set rules in into the product, and then it would the those emails would get sent to uh, the the encryption service and would be encrypted. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, SES, <laughs> SES, SES does not exist anymore, I think. The the secure email server. Oh, SES. Oh, yeah. No. It's, it's a very old product. But I'm sorry. I, I, I know it. I mean, I've been with Trustway four years, but I know SES. It does come up time to time. Um, yeah, sadly, that you know, that was a very old Marshall or M86 product that is supported today by engineering but it's only for a new zealand or two new zealand government customers um, yeah no it's, it's a very small install base so um I, I was just wondering if it still existed or if it's uh it stopped we do have customers on-premise customers who renew maintenance for that as long as they they accept the fact that you know there's there hasn't been development on it, I, I had to look up the old documentation uh, since 2013, but they continue a couple, you know, not a couple, I would say a handful to 10 to a dozen customers still use it um, mm -hmm. or for their own, you know, just internal operations, knowing that there's no additional features or development on it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yep. Do we have, Thank do you. we have, do we have, Questions from uh, our partners uh, in the Netherlands or Belgium, Luxembourg, and, uh, and my customers. I know, and I will follow. But do do we have questions, specific questions from our partners in the Netherlands? Hit on um, are both encryption and archiving services available on the EU instances as well? Well, so. At the moment, not yet, but if um, if there is enough business justification, we will certainly um, add those services to the your EU instances. So, so Heron, sorry, um, not not yet will be my answer, but certainly um, you know if we if we have some opportunities, um, what what we would certainly do that. So. There was someone else asked a um, question. Chris, 
does the cloud service hook into Office 365 or it flows through Trustway first and then Office 365? So it would, yeah, it would go through the Trustwave uh, data center first through our proprietary filters and, and our four engines and then go route to Office 365. So the customer would need to redirect their MX record um, to our said cloud instance. Does that help, Chris? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? All right, don't be shy. Um, um, little little uh, addition to that last one is that you need to to uh, configure Office 365 as well to send outgoing email through uh, Trustwave Clouds if you want to want full protection. Right. If you want outbound, um, yes, yes. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, um, but I'll, I'll talk about since you mentioned outbound, outbound mail. Uh, that's that is a huge. It's the only you know. It's a big differentiator against our competitors. Uh, Microsoft have confirmed and continue to confirm to us that no other competitor ha, uh, is able to do this. We have integrated with Microsoft Information Protection and Azure Rights Management Services within our SEG, within Mail Marshall, as well as our cloud service. This was a big requirement by a very large UK financial services institution um, four years ago. They were trying to get rid of their entire semantic DLP installation that was costing them millions of dollars. They wanted the solution that could integrate as they were moving also off of Exchange, on-premise Exchange to Office 365. They wanted a another DLP solution that could integrate together. And so we went and did some research and decided to support that requirement. So um, I know Office Microsoft has been pushing for adoption of Azure Rice Management Services. And so they added um, the RMS into the E3 and E5 service levels. They added it in uh, December 2018, just as far as just early adoption of time. As um, I've talked to customers over the last two years, I'm finding more and more large enterprise customers and even medium starting to look at that um, as their additional DLP solution. So if you don't know what that is, the Azure RMS basically puts protections you can administrators can specify um, you know documents files whatever it is to have only specific users be able to maybe open it and read only or edit um, it the the service encrypts that email and the files and then sends it out now as far as outbound goes if you're not able to decrypt that email message and attachment scan the contents of it perhaps um, somebody's sending out something they're not supposed to if you can't do that if you can't view those rms protected emails and uh, attachments then you have to just let that through that's loss of you know sensitive information intellectual property whatever else but trustwave is the only uh, email security vendor right now that can on decrypt we figure out a way to decrypt the RMS protected emails or documents, uh, scan its contents, repackage, re-encrypt it, and then send it back out. So um, that is the one differentiator, you know, Proofpoint, Mimecast, Barracuda, whoever, Samantha cannot do today. So keep that in mind. All right, anything else? I think we're at the top of the hour. Thank okay. you so much. For your time. Yeah, I, I, would, I would say that if if further questions come, uh, you can address us. Uh, you're contacted at, uh, at Nuvias, and we will uh, try to answer directly or like liaise with a uh, with Trustwave to bring a, an answer as soon as possible. Um, so yeah, many thanks, Jenny. Many thanks to you all. Thank you, Nuvias, uh, for allowing me this opportunity to um, present to you. And we hope to see you again in a month's time. We'll, we'll make this a regular um, session and come back to you with, uh, you know,
more ways for you to sell. And different con con uh, content. Yeah, we have lots to communicate, I guess. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Thank you Thank so you much. All. Have a good, uh, great afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Yes. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.